The Senate will be in order. In a 59 to 39 vote, the Senate passed new sweeping financial reform legislation designed to curtail risky behavior and prevent regulatory failures in the financial sector, which brought the U.S. economy to its knees two years ago, costing millions of Americans their jobs, homes and savings. It's a strong day for America. This was not a battle about Democrats beating Republicans. The House passed a similar bill in December, but the Senate version hits Wall Street harder. Some analysts estimate it could cut the profits of major financial institutions by roughly 20 percent. I'm not sure whether I believe that, actually. I, I don't know. I mean, I've seen the reports, too. Public Citizen's David Arkish says the bill doesn't go far enough. It could be and should be far, far stronger, and the reason it's not is because of Wall Street's power. The most important change relates to derivatives, which are contracts that allow businesses to hedge risk or to make speculative bets, which can result in big profits. The Senate bill requires most derivatives to be traded on exchanges and to go through a central clearinghouse instead of the customary practice of bankers making private deals behind closed doors. Big banks didn't win anything that they shouldn't have won. The bill also gives the government the authority to take over and sell off failing financial firms and creates a new Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Backers say the agency will protect consumers from predatory lending. Scams, a lot of the problems and a lot of the abuses in the industry are going on behind your back. Uh, people are adding extra fees to your, uh, to your mortgage without you really knowing it. We know we have a, an industry that will innovate and an industry that will try to get around some of these things. So in addition to putting rules in place for what we have seen, we've empowered the regulators going forward. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce issued a statement saying it is strongly disappointed in the passage of the U.S. Senate bill and that businesses will now have less access to capital, less ability to manage risk, and less capability to create jobs. Seven million homes have been lost because of what they did or didn't do uh, as industry, not to mention the loss of value and the loss of decline of wealth in this country. So it's a rather arrogant statement for the chamber to be making. The vote gives President Obama his second major legislative victory of the year following the March passage of his landmark health care bill. The bills are now headed to a House Senate conference committee where a handful of lawmakers will work to resolve the differences between the two chambers. The goal is to get a compromise bill on the president's desk sometime this summer, a target date being July 4th. For Press TV, Rhonda Pence, Capitol Hill.